At last, 2017 comes to an end I like Ugandans have not seen before. It was packed with momentous events that seem to be stranger than fiction. As we pray that 2018 is less dramatic, New Vision TV revisits some of the highlights of 2017. The big news that started this year in January was the shuffle of the top men in uniform in January. The most affected were the then Chief of Defense Forces, General Katumba Wamala, who was moved aside to a junior minister and the then commander of the Allied Special Forces, Major General Muhozi Kaineru Gaba, who was made a presidential advisor. The top job of CDF sent to General David Muhozi. As the military men settled into their new offices, the National Lead Security Agency, the police, was hit by a shocker of a magnitude not seen before in the country's history. Assistant Inspector General of Police, who was the force spokesman and also Director for Human Resource Development, was assassinated in execution style in broad daylight near his home on the morning of March 17th. Men riding bikes pumped 17 bullets in the body of the man, who was the face of the police and many more in his driver and his bodyguard who were with him in the car. In April, the mayor of Kamwenge, Geoffrey Biamukama, traveled to Kampala to carry out some transactions at the land registry. He was picked by police to be interviewed about the murder of AIGP Kawesi. Biamukama was to surface later in hospital with holes in his legs, casting police in whose custody he was in awkward light. Nalofenya police station in Jinja gained a bad name Though the police officers who tortured Biamukama did it before, he was taken to Narufenya. In May, the founder of proprietor of St. Lawrence Schools, Lawrence Mochibi, died after long illness. At the funeral, dozens of young children were brought and paraded as his biological children. As the public gasped, pregnant young women also started turning up saying they were carrying Mochibi's babies. Police advised the rich Muchibi family to look after the pregnancies until they are delivered and DNA tests confirm whether they are also Muchibi's biological babies. Thousands of parents who entrusted their daughters to Muchibi's care in his schools had to deal with a confusing suspicion. June brought its financial confusion. The national budget for 2016-2018 was presented amidst acrimony as some members of the Honorable Amos Lugolovi's Budget Committee presented a minority report disassociating themselves from the budget proposal. One of the grievances that forced people like Honorable Cecilia Ogwal to dissent was the escalating national debt and the fact that domestic borrowing was proposed to the above the legal limit. In June, also, Parliament overwhelmingly approved recommendations from its Committee on Commissions, statutory authorities and state enterprises requiring 42 public officials to refund 6 billion Uganda shillings shared out for winning an all tax arbitration case in London. The same TAF committee chaired by Bugweri MP Abdu Katuntu had earlier forced Chinese contractors to refund over 26 billion shillings they had illegally taken away from a fund meant for compensating people displaced from project site areas. August ended on a strange note as the congregation in Prophet Elvis Mbonye's fellowship took the saying of worshipping the ground, someone walks on rather literally. Some were photographed as they kissed the prophet's shoes at Kololo. A top journalist who kissed the shoes said openly that he would kiss them again given the chance. The senseless killing of girls after raping them and brutally torturing them in Entebbe and Nansana that started around June continued through the months of July, August and September. Police called on Mama Fina, leader of traditional spiritual healers, to help solve the murder's puzzle since they seemed to have ritualistic character. As police was crying out to Mama Fina to help solve the Entebbe and Nansana murders, she was at the time deeply entangled in personal romantic matters. Just like nature abhors a vacuum, Mama Fina also abhors a vacuum in her heart and was too busy preparing to wed her late husband's best friend in September, just 11 months since Major Chigundu was shot dead by assassins on motorbikes. It was in September that the whole world was turned by Uganda's parliament 
when security men in suits who were not members of parliament entered the august chamber to evict members opposed to the lifting of presidential age limit who had been ordered out by the speaker a lengthy fight ensued uganda trended in news around the world several mps were severely injured and hospitalized October was yet to bring more confusing security news. The Chief Tenancy of Military Intelligence, CMI, arrested several senior police officers and arraigned them before the court martial. The police officers were charged with reformment of Randy's refugees that were protected under international law by enjoying asylum in Uganda. The military made grave allegations that the police officers were selling the refugees to the foreign force from which they had fled, a crime known as reformment. November brought more chilling allegations against the police officers with other detained suspects trying to harm them, accusing them of previous torture in different locations in the country. The year came to a close with a major constitutional amendment that has seen the age limit for presidential scrapped to allow 18-year-olds and those above 75 seek the presidency in elections. December is also closing on a confusing note in security terms as member of the deadly Kifesi gangs who rob and kill ruthlessly in Kampala appeared on television explaining their dreadful acts and then declaring that they are now working with police to fight crime. Top Chifesi killer Paddy Serunjoji, also known as Sobi, explained casually how they then killed their victims but expressed disappointment that they are still criminals in the police ranks who we'll still try to send them on robbing missions. As we enter 2018, we all pray that Uganda will be safer.